Broadcasting live from somewhere in the Shadow Realm, this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links Talk. Here's your host, Doug Dimadoo. Hey there, welcome to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links Talk. Today, we're going to check out all the news that's going on for Monday, November 6th, and there is a lot of great stuff. Uh, those of you guys who are, I guess, listening to this now should have already gone through the whole maintenance thing and, and had gone through the updates, but I want to take a look at the news today, starting with the new 1.5 experience campaign. Now, this is going on from November 6th through November 13th. Uh, if you are still trying to level up any of your legendary duelists, I know I'm trying to do that with Dr. Crowler. Get Dr. Crowler to level 35 to get that uh, second Ancient Gear Golem. Uh, now is a good time to take advantage of that. So if you're going to be level grinding, this is an excellent time to do that. This is going on again through November 13th. And also, Jesse Anderson is in Duel World. So uh, he's the, cyber, uh, the Crystal Beast user, Jesse Anderson. He's appeared. He doesn't have all of the, uh, I guess, all of his hot, his, uh, heavy hitter cards just yet, but he's still a pretty, pretty diff, uh, you know, interesting challenge within, um, uh, you know, with, within Duel, Duel World right now. Uh, but basically, the big prize right now is Crystal Beast Topaz Tiger if you're able to defeat Jesse. Uh, level 4 Beast, 1600 attack, 1000 defense. If this card attacks an opponent's monster, it gains 400 attack during the damage step only. If this face up card is destroyed while it is in a monster card zone, you can place it face up in your spell and trap card zone as a continuous spell card instead of sending it to the graveyard. So essentially, this card is a 2000 beater just on the attacking side. Uh, really good card. Uh, if you're running some kind of beast deck, there should be some additional support that could be beneficial. Or if you're just trying to run a crystal beast deck, you should be able to collect a lot of the pieces um, out of just the uh, trying to farm. Uh, Jesse, it seems like if you have any type of fusion deck or something along those lines, a Master of Oz or something something like that, I don't think you're really going to have too many issues. People are using just classic Cerberus decks to farm Jesse. Uh, that's just kind of my... I mean, I'm not really trying to farm him right now, but from what I'm seeing, Cerberus decks should do the trick. So, uh, something to look into. Then there are some event-exclusive Legendary Duelists coming to the gate. This was on November 6th. This came out and uh, should be working right now. So you're going to get two different uh, duelists. You got Maximilian Pegasus jumping in there and the Paradox Brothers. Uh, I'm going to do a future episode just kind of breaking out a lot of their rewards now that they're the new legendary duelist that you're able to get at the duel gate there. So I'm really excited. I just got my third relinquished as of this morning. And yeah, pretty stoked about that. Now I could run a uh, full-on Relinquish deck, even though it is so far removed from the meta and is not efficient whatsoever. Still, for casual duels, oh, I'm pretty stoked. Now I got a three three um, uh, Ritual cards and three uh, Relinquish cards. So, oh, man, I'm, I'm already pretty happy about these additions. Uh, so if there's anything that you've missed from some of those prior events, there's no new cards. You know, any, everything that we've seen in the prior events, the, uh, those are the cards that are available now as far as you, that you were able to get through their, their regular drops. So, um, yeah, nothing nothing special added. It's just that now anybody's got the option to try and unlock either of those characters. Uh, then there's also the Forbidden and Limited list and the Skill Balance. That took effect today, November 6th. So you're seeing things like the Skill Balance. It has adjusted, so it's not necessarily as uh, particular as it used to be. So people are already trying to mess around with it, trying to run 21 card decks and see how Balance works with that. And they're getting uh, pretty interesting results. So as more people play around with the Balance skill... Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see where, you know, what kind of things they come up with based off of that. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, you also know that the uh, uh, Cyber Angel card, the Machine Angel Ritual, has now been limited to one. The uh, uh, Red Eye Spirit has been semi limited to two. Champ's Vigilance has been limited to one. So, you got a few cards that are kind of hitting the meta or mostly targeting the free to play meta uh, at this point. So, that's, that's pretty much what got limited right now. Um, but yeah, let, let's move forward to there. Are, there is a deadline for trading in your tickets for season 22. Uh, the deadline is, let's see, it should be December 31st, 2017. Uh, so make sure that you do use your, uh, your ranked rewards, uh, tickets at some point, try and get something good. 
there was an issue with an ongoing event that's uh, in the process of being fixed, or has been fixed by now, um, which is good. But also, too, Dr. Crowler's Tricky Test has ended, and uh, you are able to use your EX jewels through November 15th. So, please, you have about a week or so before your uh, EX jewels run out. Just, you know, spend them, because you're not going to really get much out of it once they convert those EX jewels to coins. You're really going to get nothing, so you might as well just get some cards out of it. Cards that you probably can convert to coins anyway and probably get more out of, so that's just my recommendation. Make sure that you do that before November 15th. Um, yeah, that is uh, that is our primary thing there. And also, too, as of November 4th, there is an event survey for Dr. Crowler's Tricky Test. It seems like overall, a lot of people um, thought very highly of this event. And it seems like uh, seems like the drops were, you know, could have been a little difficult at times, but there were plenty of opportunities through the additional homework for the assessment scores uh, of players being able to farm Dr. Crowler a lot a lot more easily. And again, he wasn't a difficult farm either, as long as you had a strong enough monster like a, like a Master of Oz or something like that on the field rather quickly. Um, seemed to be Dr. Crowler was giving people no trouble, and uh, farming was, was fairly straightforward. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just my thoughts, and from what I've been reading around on the subreddit and on Facebook and on Twitter, how people really, really enjoy this event. So if there's something that you didn't like about the event or something that you really enjoyed about the event, maybe the length of it was too long, but I, I don't think so either. I mean, that gave everybody plenty of time to get the last remaining cards that they needed to get all their play sets. Because um, for whatever reason, um, Ancient Gear sold, or not, not Soldier, but one of the... Uh, uh, one of those ancient gear monsters, uh, the the level five ancient gear monster, had a lot of a lot of trouble getting that third copy. But finally, because it was such a long event, I was able to get that third copy after farming for so much. So I mean, yeah, it, it gives you opportunities where I guess other events were kind of lacking. So yeah, but if there is something that you don't like about it, now is the time to post that. You could add it to the survey. Um, so yeah, definitely take advantage of that. But also, just something I want to bring to your attention: uh, on November second, there was a revision to the terms of of use and this will take effect on November 16th uh, one thing that I know has been highlighted uh, all around I know some people were posting screenshots of it um, part of this revision to the terms of use is that if your account is not active for more than six months Konami does retain the right to uh, pretty much delete your account because um, they're seeing it as an inactive account um, it's just going to take up space on all of their servers if they keep your account there, if you're not planning on using it. So, um, again, that's part of your licensing agreement is that you should be able to, uh, or you, you would expect to see your account deleted if you don't play. So, uh, yeah, even if you're not really getting too into the game, I would at least recommend logging in every so often, uh, even if you're kind of not in the mood to play Duel Links. Uh, I find that hard to hard to fathom because uh, any chance I get, I'm trying to open up Duel Links and play. Just uh, just if I have a few minutes here or there, bathroom break or anything like that, I will try to play a duel or two. So um, being inactive for six months does not seem to be um, in the future for me, but at some point it could be. But you got to understand that with this new terms and agreements, uh, Konami does reserve the right to um, basically remove your account. So uh, for those of you listening who aren't really playing this game too much just just keep that in the back of your mind uh next time you have nothing to do and you just want to open the app real fast um definitely worth uh worth a look anyway uh that's pretty much it for all the um all the news that's going on within dual links today if there's anything that you would like me to add feel free to reach out to me on twitter at yugioh deck talk it's all one word at yugioh deck talk and i'd love to hear from you that's it for today's episode thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you next time take care